In less than one hour, we're making one pot chicken chorizo. This recipe costs less than $10 per portion. It serves four, all of the ingredients are high quality and check out the size of this baguette. Let's do it. Now for this recipe, we need two different types of tomatoes. These are just regular tomatoes. They weigh 400 grams worth. And then underneath I have these baby romas. These are 400 grams as well. We're gonna leave these whole, but we are going to chop these ones up. The baby romas can be left whole. You can slice them in half if you wanted to. But as for these tomatoes, I recommend slicing them into three or four even size strips. Take individual strips and then just cut them into twos or threes. Rotate 90 degrees, dice them into even sized pieces. And if you wanted to, you can make a tomato concasse, which is removing the skin, but it isn't really necessary for this type of recipe. With the tomatoes done, we then have our chorizo. This right here is Spanish chorizo, weighs 200 grams or 100 grams per sausage. I recommend just slicing these in half lengthways. Just make sure you get nice even sized strips. And then with this, you can cut it again into quarters. All I like to do is just slice these into nice pieces like this. Doesn't have to be too big. Shouldn't make it too thin though, because we do want this fat to render. This is what's going to create the oil or the fat that's in our chicken, getting extra flavor throughout this dish. What I have here, six cloves of freshly peeled garlic. Just lay it on the board, use the side of your knife, blade facing down, put the palm of your hand on top of it, and then just push down to crush. We're just going to activate that allicin compound, which is what gives garlic its strong, beautiful flavor. Next is five grams of thyme. I'm using lemon thyme for this recipe, but regular is completely fine. You can chop this up or leave it whole. If you are leaving it whole, I recommend wrapping it up in some twine and then using it as a bouquet garni. That way we can get the infusion out of it, but there won't be any woody stems throughout the dish. As for this one, I am going to slice it up. The stems are quite soft on this one, so I'm not gonna worry about removing the leaves, but it's completely up to you how you wanna prepare this. Another ingredient that is optional, but I highly recommend is some fresh basil. We're not going to waste any of this and we're going to be picking off the leaves from the stem and then we're going to use the stem in the sauce as an infusion. There might be little pieces like this, but then you also might have some big stuff like this. Really does add a beautiful flavor, but like I said, it's optional. The leaves are also going to be used as a garnish at the end. Last but not least, add one kilo of chicken thigh to a mixing bowl and then we're going to generously season this with salt and pepper. Obviously the amounts are up to you. Don't taste it. I know I have said in the past to taste it is literally just the term. It doesn't mean literally taste it. Let's then give this a quick mix around, just making sure that's all completely coated. And there's no need for oil. Like I said, with the chorizo, the fat's going to render out and we're going to use that fat to cook the chicken just for extra flavor. We will be adding a little bit of olive oil into the dish a bit later on, but nothing needs to be done for this type of stuff. With that done and you have this beautiful chicken, obviously it's lightly seasoned. We can then get on to the next step. Place a large high rimmed pan over a medium heat. Add in the chorizo whilst the pan's still cold. No need for oil because we will use the fat that's rendered out of this. What we're going to do is just cook this for about two to three minutes just to get it golden and obviously for that fat to render. Once that is done, we can then scoop this out, leaving it over a medium heat and just put this in a bowl, place it onto the side for the time being. Now straight back in, we're going to add in the chicken, doing this in batches, place it flat side down first. We're just going to sear these for about three to four minutes on each side just to get that nice golden crust. Then we can flip these over and just repeat that three minutes again. Once that is done as well, just remove these and place them onto a plate and just repeat with the other batch. If the pan does get a little bit dry, you can add a splash of oil, but there shouldn't be any need for that. Also, the chicken isn't supposed to be fully cooked at this stage. We only want to gain the color. Let's then add in one tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil, add in both of those tomatoes, the chopped up ones as well as the whole baby romas. Season it heavily with salt, tomatoes can take quite a bit, as well as cracked black pepper. And then we're going to fry this off for about two to three minutes just to slightly soften them. We don't wanna cook these all the way through here because we do wanna make a sauce out of these. Add in one tablespoon of balsamic vinegar for a little bit of sweetness and acidity, as well as the crushed up garlic. The chorizo, as well as all of that oil, please do scrape out the bowl and don't waste any of that stuff the chopped up thyme or the bouquet garni, depending on which you chose to use, the basil stems, which are obviously optional, and then just mix and cook this for about two minutes just to slightly soften everything. Once mixed through, add in one cup or 250 milliliters of chicken or vegetable stock, which will be the base to our sauce as well as the tomatoes. Then give this a really good mix through and just allow this to come to a simmer in the background. It is also a good idea just to check it for seasoning, adjusting if necessary with salt and pepper. And I'm also gonna add in a little bit of sugar just to counterbalance that acidity. If you did add that in, just give it a quick mix through. And like I said, just bring this to a simmer. Once at a simmer, we can add all of that chicken back in, making sure you cover it in the liquid and also add in all of those resting juices as well that might be on the plate or bowl, just for all of that extra flavor. Give this another mix around real quick. Just be gentle with it. We don't wanna break up any of that chicken. Make sure everything is completely covered. Bring it to a simmer again, and then we can transfer this over to a preheated oven that's at 190 degrees Celsius or 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Just cook this for 45 minutes. 
Now, after 45 minutes, just carefully remove it from the oven. Be careful of the steam. And what you should have is a beautiful looking dish. Whip out your average size baguette. I'm going to slice off a few pieces of this and get them toasted up. You can leave it fresh if you wanted to. And I'm slicing it on an angle just for a little bit of presentation. This is optional, but I'm adding over some basil leaves on the final product. You can just do it at the end. Serve it in plates or bowls. I recommend about two to three thigh fillets per portion, depending on size. Make sure you top it off with lots of that sauce and those tomatoes and chorizo. Garnish it up with some cracked black pepper, 20 cracks worth. <laughs> and then also hit it up with some more fresh basil at the end, just for that little pop of freshness. If you're using toast, add it on there as well, just for a little bit of presentation. And what we're left with is this beautiful one pot chicken chorizo that smells and looks amazing. With everything said and done though, there is only one way to find out how good this tastes. That is, we can then dig in. Everything about this dish is just beautiful. The flavor is incredible. It's super juicy, it's tender. The chorizo adds a beautiful smokiness. You've got the infusion of the basil, then the balsamic vinegar, the sweetness from the tomatoes, and the garlic at the end is just a massive pop of flavor in the mouth. Definitely do make this recipe, it's amazing. Can also serve it with whatever you want as well. Mash is a great option for this type of thing. I like to eat it with bread, but it's up to you. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Consider subscribing, it really does help me out, as well as hitting the bell notification next to it so you never miss when I upload. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.